right, footy's back. Welcome to AFLW today, your one-stop shop for all things AFLW as we head into round two. I'm your host, Alex Donnelly. As always, joined by Bryony Dawson on Jacket Watch this week. Green with the green screen. Yeah, great. I actually didn't think about that. And then Gerald's just been like, hey, do you know that you're wearing a green jacket on a green screen? I was like, huh. Not ideal. We'll figure that? it out. <laughs> this is why Gerald's magic. And the man who demanded to be on the show after his beloved North Melbourne Kangaroos went 1-0. It is the stats guy, Lee McCallion. It feels so good uh, to talk about North Melbourne in a positive light. Other than our AFL men's show, I can talk about him top of the table, laughing. You're not top of the oh, table. Oh, not top of the table. GWS side. GWS side, sorry. But after flying. this round, you probably will round, be. After the next round, we'll be top of the table. 1-0. <laughs> You're 1-0, stats yeah. guy. But I'm up and about. Very excited. In important news, great news, we have new friend of the show, Sarah Lampard from the Melbourne Demon. Yes. joining the show as we talk about their game against Brisbane this weekend and, of course, the round one victory over Geelong. It's a great hang. Can't wait. Can't wait. Yeah. All right. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please follow AFL Today on socials. AFLW Today is where you get everything across social media. It's AFL Today on YouTube. If you hit the subscribe button and the alarm bell, I think every time the video comes out, you get a notification. Yeah. It's a good time, but get around the socials as well. And wherever you get a podcast, AFL Today, five stars, like, subscribe, all the good stuff. That's a lot. It is a lot. You're happy done, you don't have well. to do it. I'm like, don't even <laughs> ever ask me. Even I don't know where to yeah. find this podcast. That's all right. You just, you're just here. You're just here. <laughs> well, you get, you're ready to go. You get the link sent in the group chat. Yeah, so yeah, just, yeah. Like, I, just I hit get the, the link. link and I'm like, thank you. I watch for you now. <laughs> exactly. All right. Because can you smell it? Because footy is back. Woo! <laughs> Unfortunately, we do need to touch on the injuries out of round one. A first lot of the of all. news is negative. Yeah. Which is a bit sad, but yeah. not great. Uh, so. Injuries for this weekend. We have three out with concussion. Atkinson, Collier, and Clark. That's not great. No. Uh, one was self-inflicted, though. Atkinson running headfirst into Chloe Malloy. Yeah. yeah that, that wasn't was, great. No. That was a uh, concussion Actually, by enthusiasm, <laughs> yeah. I think. Yeah. <laughs> Which is the best type of concussion. The best type of concussion. Because there's a good type of concussion. That's the, no, of course not. But that is the best type. Of, rather than someone just like bumping into your head. Uh, bad news isn't killed her. Patrigios is out for the season with a foot injury. That is brutal for them. Oh. Do we feel that coming? Did we feel because they were very quiet about mm. it for a little while and then out? Yeah, I feel like a lot of, well, we're going to talk touch on that later. A lot of AFLW injuries they like to play it down a bit and then go, yeah. Oh, yeah, they're out for the season. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes, right. we haven't actually seen them in three or four no, weeks. They're so. actually missing a week. <laughs> uh, Bonnie, too, got out for six to eight weeks with a knee oh, injury, just heartbreaking, which just sucks for her. We love Bonnie on this show, and a lot of fans just yeah. love Bonnie. That was brutal. Yeah. Mm. Taylor Harris is out for the season with a shoulder injury. She looked ginger before she went down. Mm. It's uh, Came back too early, maybe? Yeah. A friend of the show, Eliza Riley, wrote about it today, wherever you can find the AFLW tackle, Code Sports, Herald Sun, wherever yep. you get that stuff. She has mentioned that maybe, and this is, going to Paris hasn't helped because rehabbing an injury and then picking up a quad injury, but maybe if she stayed in Melbourne, she's properly rehabbed the shoulder. But again, it's, you know. Disagree. Nah, we don't Dis know. We don't people know. are still trying to take her down for going to Paris. <laughs> it's not. I think it's not taking her down. It's more if she stayed at home for the extra two weeks to rehab properly, maybe she wouldn't have looked sore before it. But also, Melbourne Demons doctors, you're not having a good year. No. You send Petrarca back out. Taylor Harris is sore and you're sending her out for round one. Mm -hmm. Bit of not an a good there. year. Not a yeah. good year. Uh, Sinead Davidson from Brisbane. Well, we thought she had a broken wrist. She does. That was bad. <laughs> that was bad. She, yeah. And it's she like just as soon it. as she landed it, mm. oh, yeah. that just, yeah. Yeah, it ends up a bit dangly, doesn't mm. it? Yeah. yeah. Well, the, good. The, the singlet sling is never a yeah, great sign. Absolutely so, not. Six to eight weeks, had surgery Monday afternoon. We'll get to the suspensions. O'Loughlin got one week for a dangerous tackle. Fair? Fair. Yeah, it was fair. It was there. Tani White got three games for the bump on Maddie Collier. So they grade these the same as they do the men's. Yeah. I, I think the games are different, though. Let's of talk the, about it. Let's yeah. open it up. Little can of worms. I agree that it's a three-week suspension. Really? But when you take into account three weeks in the men's, 20, 23 games, and then you look at the percentage of yeah, what that is awesome. compared to three weeks out of 11, maybe you bring this one back to She's two. out for a quarter of the season. Yeah. That's for a uh, fair bump. Oh, you don't think oh, it's a shooting game is pro in concussion? He no, thought I'm Peter, not. Of course he I'm thought not. Peter Wright shouldn't have got no, four weeks for okay. deleting Harry right. Cunningham. Uh, probably okay. could have been a week or maybe just a final. You choose to bump. She chose to you bump. You knock someone but, out and concuss them. The duty of care is on you. Yeah, it is. There's no thing in the rules that says you can't bump, and she didn't get her high. That's all I'm saying. The bump caused the concussion. Yep. All right. We don't have to agree. That's yeah. all right. Oh, dude, agree to disagree. <laughs> agree to disagree yeah. Yeah. No, I just think it was it was a fair bump in terms of where she bumped it. But I agree it should be at least one week. I think it 
Not three weeks. I think they need to like pro rata it. Like yeah. the, you with, know. with the weightings, it should be two. A week. Yeah, I'm going. I'm happy with a week. You can't just have one for a concussion. All right, fine. She can have two. <laughs> yeah, maybe extend the season to you know 17 games. Yeah, Let's we'll go. get there. Yeah, we'll get. We'll there. get there. We'll yeah. Get there. <laughs> yeah. All right. Enough seriousness. Let's get Sarah Lampard on the show and have a chat with her. All right. AFLW today back. How cool is this, Brony? First guest in the studio. We've had a great discussion pre-interview. So we have, have really we? loosened up. <laughs> it's not at all serious, but it's Sarah Lampard. Sarah, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks Woo! for having me. Yeah, we do. We can do you like do an actual. Clap. Yeah, you do the applause. You're the applauser. Yeah, applause great. Thanks for being here, Sarah. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Do we want to do serious footy chat first or fun stuff? What do we want to do? No, we'll go serious first for all those serious people um, watching at home, listening in their cars. Yep. I think it's very important that we hit that real hard footy chat. Okay. Yeah. Win of a Cattery first round. Big win given your start to the season is exceptionally tough. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, it was awesome to beat the Cats for starters. They kind of knocked us out of finals last year, so it was mm. good to get some redemption back on the board. But I think, if anything, we're just proud with how we played. Um, I feel like that's the kind of brand we want to play, like good, honest football, like hard at the contest, um, some real gritty moments. But we kind of just worked our way through the game and um, did a bit of problem solving, got over the line at the end. So good start for us and mm. we'll just roll in through these next few weeks and build on that. Yeah, a bit of a bit. Of, sorry, a bit of problem solving mid game is like really important, isn't it? Because you probably you go in with a plan, and you know, round one, everyone's trying different stuff in the pracking matches and that kind of thing, and then you get to round one, tight game, and it's like, you know, what do you what do you do? Yeah. What was some of that mid game problem solving? Well, especially because I came out and kicked the first two goals on yeah. us, and they were kind of really pressing hard. So I was like, all right, how are we going to win clearances from here? Yeah. What do we need to do to tighten up on defense? Um, but it was really, yeah, calm amongst the group and we kind of just, you know, sorted it out, which was actually like really reassuring yeah. for us that we could kind of just work our way through the game. But we never really got um, overawed by the situation and just stayed calm. So that was that was really nice. A bit of pleasing. composure yeah. from the <laughs> Melbourne Demons. Does it also help to have an outlet like Kate Hoyt? It's like, all right, give, give Kate the footy <laughs> and see ya. Protect I mean, yeah. her at all costs. Yeah. <laughs> Kate was quite impressive. There was one clearance in particular. I was just, I had like front row seats to it. But I think yeah. she took on three cats and then kicked it forward and it was just, just very impressive. Mm. But I was like, wow. I was just standing behind, just. <laughs> you just like the pass, like, Bye, mate. Good, good contribution, guys. Good stuff. I was like, that was awesome. Mm. It was great to have her on our team for sure. Mm. And you've had a bit of injury sort of run through the squad to start the season. We'll start with Liv Purcell, who had that horrible facial injury yeah. in the preseason. She's got a metal plate in her face, yeah, correct? Yeah, she's got a couple in there. Oh, Far out. That's not great. Um, how's, how's she holding yeah. up? Yeah, she's gone all right. She had a bit of an extended stay in Adelaide because she wasn't allowed to fly. It was um, like five, five nights, was it? Uh, no, it ended up being about a week and a half. Oh, wow. She caught okay. the train back. Um, <sighs> she makes it even worse. No, apparently, what? it's actually apparently like a very luxurious train that I'm, she can I'm kind of I'm more than 10 down. nights in Adelaide part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not much to do in Adelaide. It's not bad, Adelaide. Like, it's good for a weekend, like gather around, like all for it, but like 10 days there, I'd get bored. Okay. Yeah. Nice train though. Yeah. yeah, train was awesome by all reports, but um, yeah, she's back in, in um, Melbourne now, so she'll build into training but yeah a bit of a horror injury but mm. I think she'll just kind of take it slow and see how she goes but she's a very dedicated and determined person so I think she's pretty keen to get back into playing pretty yeah, soon. Oh, I can yes I would think so because yeah. it's, it's not an injury that you think you're going to do in your uh, AFL career is it because you know you worry about your knees you worry about your wrist you worry ankle. about all ankle all this kind of stuff and you're like no actually I'm going to fracture my face and end no. up with metal plates in my face in my AFLW Absolutely career not. I would hate to think what I would like how I'd come out of that hit so yeah um, yeah she's ta taken it really well she's, and she's doing all right. um, yeah she's like straight up afterwards like was talking about how she can help the team so she's yeah she's pretty mm. keen to keep contributing mm. and get back as soon as she can it There's is. talks of maybe a mask. <laughs> so she's, oh, yeah, that, that mask. That they, some of the, the men's. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or like a Kari Irving kind of setup. Yeah, so yeah, like, yeah. She's pretty keen to like just whack that on. I reckon she, <laughs> she, <laughs> she might have I had it on during the Euro. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. You'd just do it just because, wouldn't you? Well, How I think cool would if you, you look, though? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Well, I even though with like Kari Irving, it was kind of an aura about him. He played better with the mask on. Mm. So yeah. I think she's, like, I don't know, like medical wise, like I don't know if that's. A feasible thing to do, but I think she's just can, pretty keen to just keep playing. So. It might be like an alter ego that you get to take on. You're like, who yeah. are you behind the mask? Yeah. You know, yeah. 
And everyone yeah. can sign it. It's like wearing a cast yeah. at school. Everyone I was about to say, it. surely if the AFL allows it, it's just like demons colour that makes you look like a demon with it yeah. on. Yeah. Oh, just wow. Re- look real, like a mascot. Real intimidation. Just walking out that first centre, bouncing the opposition. It's like, oh, no. Yeah. That's great. That's yeah. a great idea. Tell, yeah. her, tell her definitely get the mask. I mean, it would be suitable. She's quite a ferocious player. <laughs> yeah. seen her play, so I think the mask mm. with a couple of horns maybe up top would, yeah. be, would be good. Yeah, well I'm played. I reckon we can workshop this. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There's a social clip with like our social social gal Spence putting the mask on and we can do this. Uh, also, Definitely in the suggestions box at yeah, Melbourne Footy Club. Yeah, helping you out, Dees. <laughs> uh, also, the bad news yesterday, of course, with Taylor Harris ruled out for the rest of the season with a shoulder injury. Obviously, heard it on Saturday night uh, and then it's come out that she's now out for the season. That's got to be flattening for her and for the team as well. She's yeah. important to the structure. Yeah, it really sucks for Tay. She's kind of been coming off the back of um, a surgery on her other shoulder off the back end of last season. Um, so she was kind of fully fit from that. But yeah. then to her, the, the other one really sucks for her. But I think if there's any consolation, because she's come back and she's fully fit with that shoulder, I think like from here going forward, if she rehabs this one properly, which she will, she's a real hard worker, like from here onwards in her career, I think she's going to have two stable shoulders. So, I mean, yeah, she'll be sweet from here on in. But for this season, mm. yeah, really sucks. Well, that's what she said in her in her post last mm. night when she posted about it. It was like, you know, once once I do rehab this, I'll have two good shoulders for the first time really in my yeah. like professional career. So it's like, look out. Yeah. And then she also posted, which I thought was really cool, she was like, Two disposals for the season is better than one. So <laughs> I was like, that's actually, there was like a little screenshot of her disposal account. And I was yeah. like, you know what, that's that's good of her to like keep it light and, you know, because it would be, you know, the mental strain yeah. of injury after injury after, you know, all that mm. is is really quite taxing on players. Yeah, absolutely. But, yeah, if Tay, like Tay's a super creative person. She's always yeah. thinking outside the box. Yeah. I think in terms of like her role in the team, She'll come up with something or the team will come up with something that she'll still be super involved and contributing. Yeah. So at least for this season, she'll have some sort of role with the team. Um, but, yeah, next year when she's fully fit, two shoulders, like I'm going to imagine that she's going to get a lot more than two disposals yeah. next year. Two shoulder tay-tay. It's going to be nice and easy, just that first, just just a couple of quick little handball yeah. receives, a couple of cheapies to <laughs> couple start of little, season. A couple of these ones well, to warm them up. Can't forget there, right. there was the two tackles as well. So did the team thing on the way Absolutely. out as well. Um, <laughs> two for two. Yeah. Injuries are... They are much more uh, exacerbated in an AFLW season, obviously, given what is it, 11 weeks or 11 games into 10 weeks plus final. So you had an injury last year as well. How frustrating is it knowing you've got these games in a short clump and you're just like, oh, 10 weeks, yep, I'm done? Yeah, it is a bit frustrating, especially because we, like, for instance, like we've been training since Feb. <sighs> so, like, we've been putting in all this hard work and then yep. it's like all of a sudden, like you get an injury, like for instance, like me last year, I had a wrist injury, which I think was like going to put me out for minimum six weeks. Yeah. So I was like, cool, I'll pencil in the grand final for my return date, <laughs> <laughs> which we do, I didn't end up making it to. But it's just, it's really unfortunate that we work all this way, all the way through the season. And then you can have a little hiccup yeah. Um, and it can rule you out for half the year. Whereas like all we want to do really as players is just play the game. You literally just want to play yeah. the game, don't you? Mm-hmm. And I think it's even worse in round one. Yeah. Like you don't what even you get said, a game. Yeah, like all the all the like the preseason and, and and the thing that everyone's been saying about having like a full preseason this year for the first time. And it's like you've done the work. Everyone's like, I'm feeling the fittest I've ever mm-hmm. felt like Mua Lelawifi. And she was like, and then it's just she yeah. didn't even get a game. And then it's round one and it's just it's heartbreaking. Yeah. Or it's even like it's like season ending injuries are one thing, like to be out for a year. But then it's like those like, you know, five, six week injuries. It's like it just like knocks your season mm. yeah. like wayward. And it, like I find those ones really frustrating yeah. because it's like we only do get a chance to like play anywhere between like 11 and what, 15 games a year. Yeah. Um, so it's a bit just unfortunate that it kind of can disrupt your season like that. Yeah, because you lose your fitness so quickly and mm. yeah. Yeah. So – you're one of the uh, just four original demons left from the OG draft in 2016. So you can sort of take us through a little bit of a journey of how the league has progressed from then to now, like where it's at now and where it's going to go in the future. Surely you can just look back and go, okay, we've paved the way for the future. Yeah, I, I, there's been so much change since like we first started. 
like I just speaking of like the D's, like we kind of had like a real basic game plan in our first year and it was just kind of like kick it to the open side and like hope for the best. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, like I think our game plan was kick it to Kat, who was our our wing Kat Phillips, yeah. which is just essentially just get it to her hands. She's super quick. She'll run in and kick a <laughs> goal, which worked to be fair a few times. And is that the plan now for Kate Hall? Uh, <laughs> kick it to Kate. Kate just set up or just like on my head. Oh, yeah, no, comment. <laughs> no comment. No <laughs> comment. <laughs> Stay, take this out of the podcast, please. <laughs> Sorry, Stasevich, we're not telling you anything. <laughs> um, but now it's like we've got more of an intricate game plan yeah. where it's like everyone in our team has a really specific role based on their strengths. And then so we go out and roll that out and we're really confident that we can play like this high-level football because everyone's capable and up to it. And that's kind of been over the over the process of nine seasons. But, yeah, like we have girls coming into the comp now that's like they've played all the way through their their life. And, yeah. they're, and they're there's proper pathways where they've yeah, been able to be yeah. elite players. Like we've got um, one player, Alicia Pisano, who we drafted yep. um, in the last draft and she's just such a natural footballer and her kicking ability is like she, her kicking ability and her full work is probably the best, like one of the best in our team. Yeah. Like, I liken it to someone like Tyler Hanks, who's one of our best players. But you've got this type of talent just like coming in the door. So it's like a little bit alarming for someone who's been, <laughs> <laughs> who's, who's been in the comp for a while. But um, Yeah, because do you do you ever find yourself looking around the club? And I, I know you do a lot of mentoring around the club too, which I'll ask you about. But do you ever find yourself going, well, back in my day, you know, when we first started, do you, uh, you find yourself you ever pull those out? Oh, n- not really, but... Like, I just feel like I have to remind some of them about like the history of the team or like I remember like one of our players in the first season was taken from like a Div, Div 3 Gippsland League and just yeah. chucked straight into the AFLW. <laughs> <laughs> so I think there's a bit of history amongst it. But I, I feel like I'm not that old to be co- talking about it back in my day, but yeah. I think it's cool to like note the history of our team and the yeah. competition to some of the younger players. Yeah, great. Um, yeah, because you do um, – you do mentor uh, a lot of the the players and that kind of stuff because you you are one of the OGs. Um, what do you think are some of the important factors of being a mentor for people? That's a good question. I think just kind of be like for me personally, just being approachable. So if they've got any questions, like it is a pretty, it can be a pretty demanding environment sometimes, mm. but just knowing that they can come to someone and have a chat um, like through whatever problems they've got. If I don't have the answers, then it's like I don't have to act like I know have the answers, yeah. but I can <laughs> handball them off to someone else that I know has gone through a similar experience or yeah. Um, yeah, can relate to them. But yeah, I think it's just not being, yeah, not thinking that you know it all, but just being open and curious to like what they've got to say and yeah, um, yeah, just being a, a face that they can lean on. Awesome a face that they can lean on. Shoulder that they can lean on. Yeah, we don't want another fa- no. broken face. That's, <laughs> that's not great. No, no, no. So the stats guy, he's actually not here today, but he's put in a bunch of research for us as well. Shout out to the stats guy there. You're becoming Dr. Lampard. You're finding time to do a PhD while playing footy. Like, gosh, how do you manage your time? Well, now not, let's yeah. let's just say exactly what it is. You're at Latrobe Uni. You're a Latrobe Uni research officer, and you're doing evaluation work in fem, in the female athlete area. Is this correct? That is correct. Excellent. Um, well done, stats guy. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not uh, doing a PhD just yet, yep. but that's on the cards. Um, but I'm doing a master of public health at the moment. And this is kind of stemmed from like being in the AFLW yep. and playing footy. But um, yeah, I've done two ACL injuries myself. And off the back of that, I was kind of thinking I wanted to be a physio. But after spending a lot of time with physios and ACL injuries and all the ACL injuries that had happened like in our club and then in the league, I was kind of like, I think I'd rather work in the prevention side of this mm-hmm. rather than in the treatment side. Yep. Um, so that, like over COVID, I decided I'd start a public health degree. Um, which As is, people do. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. finished my degree and it's hanging up at my parents' house. And <laughs> I don't use it. It's a business Dumb management degree. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, from then kind of just found like fallen into this kind of like real niche area where it's yeah. like injury prevention, community football, um, yeah, like overlapping and women's football just in general. But, um, yeah, really passionate about reducing injuries, whether that's like ACL injuries or concussions. Um, so I'm hoping that in the future I can kind of do a bit more study in that space. Um, and is there much being done? Like, do you think that there is enough being done at the moment, especially like in terms of women's football in that reduction of um, injury pr- like prevention? Like the ACL is a massive thing. We were talking about it. You know, mm. women are, are more prone to do ACLs. Yeah. Do you think there's enough being done? And do you think we're going to get to a place where we actually can reduce? 
Well, I think there can definitely be more done. Um, yeah. Like historically speaking, a lot more research has been done in men's rather than women's. Mm-hmm. But like the crew at La Trobe, so I work at the La Trobe Sport and Exercise Medicine Research Centre. Shout yeah. out to them. <laughs> shout out. <laughs> shout out to them. We can give um, a shout out. That's fine. <laughs> um, but they've done a massive project called Prep to Play over the last couple of years, which was um, targeting female footballs at the community level. Because mm-hmm. there was such a rise in participation off the back of the AFLW. Yeah. Like a lot of female females picked up playing football. So yeah. participation went through the roof. Yeah. But it then meant it was like how many if there's a lot of if there's a lot of injuries in at like the professional level, how many oh, injuries yeah. are there at the community level? So they've gone and done a whole heap of injury surveillance, but then also tried to implement um like a injury prevention program at this level as well. Yeah. Um, which they've just, they're doing the stats for this now, but it's looking. Any, any off the top of your head that you well, can do? It hasn't been released. I can't say anything, <laughs> oh, okay. but there's some real great progress done. Yeah. There's some really good findings. So awesome. I think that's going to lay the foundation for a lot more study in the future, which is, which is awesome. I was going to say and the number would be, I think it'd be high being a football fan, seeing how many ACLs have been done worldwide in women's football over the past yeah. 18 to 24 months is insanity. Like more than the top 10% of players in the world you'd think at least probably in every team you go through, two or three of them have all done ACLs. It's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. And does that get then that research, does that without going into too much technical here, but well, is it likely that places like, you know, uh, Football Victoria, AFLW, like all of those kind of places are going to jump onto that and, and, and implement and do things about it? Yeah, essentially. So like this prep to play program is all aimed at like reducing injuries, but and that's proved like it's going to be shown to be pretty effective. So then yeah. it's like now there's scope to like really implement that across yeah. all levels and across like different codes, whether that's like Australian football or soccer or whatever. Hmm. Um, but yeah, there's real scope to grow it. And that initial study was just in Victoria, but that can go nationwide. Amazing. As well. That's yeah. really good. That's so awesome. there's there's hope. Yes, there's hope there's hope for there the heartbreak. <laughs> yeah. So now I want to ask some weird and funny questions because we've been we've had our serious stuff out Excellent. of the way. So I've got a couple. So I was thinking about this last night going, how can we not have fun with it? But it, this stuff interests me. So you've round one, you play your game at you know, 7.30 at night down in Geelong. How long does it take you to sort of, well, one, you've got to get home, but like the come down and the adrenaline dump after the game, like what time are you getting to sleep after a night game? Oh, it's shocking. Night games are shocking for getting to sleep afterwards. Yeah. Um, I reckon I got to bed. At one, which is actually pretty good. Yep. But yeah, then woke up. That is pretty good. Yeah, that is pretty good. By the time getting out of Geelong and everything. Yeah. I did stay in Torquay. My parents, okay. my parents are from Torquay, so yep. that was good. Um, but then kind of woke up at five, like wide oh. awake. <laughs> <laughs> so it was just, and that was kind of common across our team. Like yeah. not great sleeps night after a night game. So playing this weekend at 11 o'clock is not going to be too bad. You'll hit 8.30. You'll be like, I am so ready for bed. <laughs> no, I did think that. I was like, 11 a.m. game, which I don't think I've ever played before. Yeah. But I was like, perfect. <laughs> I, was like, I'm like, yeah. I was like, I'm going to sleep so well. <laughs> oh, my God. I'll be, we'll be kicking the under nines off the field. Yeah. And then we're like, all right, it's time, time yeah, to play. Off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. But what to- for that, so that's different. So what type of preparation, like what time are you uh, on Saturday morning, like what time are you going to wake up, breakfast, get to like – Surely this is a thing where you, what, you're waking up at 5 a.m. or something? Oh, not really. <laughs> I'm just trying to think. It's like, because you've got to drive down to Casey Fields as well. Like it's, she's going to have a party pie, a big M on the way. She's just going <laughs> to no, have a roll and just. <laughs> some... <laughs> no, I don't think so. But it, you're like, we've got to be there at like 9 ish. Yeah. So it's not too not too far of a stretch. And Casey's not, not, that, well, not that far away. It's about 40 minutes. But yeah, I'm, I think I'm just wake up at a usual time, six okay. or seven, probably seven. Here's me just thinking of all of, like the little things. Like I'm insane. Yeah. You woke up at 4.45 this morning. So I, I do. I try to wake up at 4.45 every morning. Wow. Yeah. It's, it's, I'm trying discipline. It's not about me. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Can I go to my weird go. question now? Okay. So I've, I mentioned that we've been asking these weird questions. Um, so I'm going to hit you with a scenario. Mm-hmm. Um, it'll be a little odd, but we definitely want to know the answer to this. So. We're, we're saying Melbourne's in the grand final this year. You've woken up the morning of the grand final and you've got no idea where you are. You're in a room, and you, but you don't know where it is. You try to leave the room and when you turn the handle, the handle comes off and you are locked in the room. There's no other way out. You reach for your phone. It's on 1% battery. You've got one phone call to make that's probably going to last 30 seconds, maybe a minute if you've got it. You've got to get to the grand final. Who are you calling and who are you definitely not calling? 
All right, so this is out of my teammates. This is out of your teammates. Sorry, yeah, I should have specified that. This is actually that. not too far-fetched because before one of our prelims in Adelaide, I went to go to the bathroom just before I went to bed. Bathroom door locked. No! <laughs> and could not could not budget. Tried to like hip and shoulder a couple of times, could not budget. <laughs> what? And I was like, this is the biggest game I've ever played in my life tomorrow. And I'm freaking locked out of the bathroom. Bathroom. All my All my toiletries are in there. Didn't get him back until the next, like at the game the next day. <laughs> battled. I think our CEO and um, president brought, like, and ended up getting the door unlocked the next morning and brought the toiletries across, but rattled. Anyway, yeah. so this is a bit triggering. Yeah, you probably going to yeah. off you, really mean, like, just all right. triggered her. I know. Sorry, so when you heard said it's all is locked, I was like, you're like, oh, God, I'm going to go. This is preparing me for this season, so this is good. I reckon I might start off with who I wouldn't go to. And two names come to mind. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and together they together they are chaos. But two we've actually mentioned one before the show, but Gabby Colburn and Sinead, Walker's finest, <laughs> shout out. <laughs> and Sinead Goldrick, who yeah. both of them are probably like two of our older players and should be the most mature. Responsible. Yeah. Nah, scattered as. <laughs> <laughs> I still love you. I still love you, Gab. Walker people, got to stay like this. Oh to be fair, God. Gab is very technical minded, so yeah. she'd actually be quite good in terms of if Give I needed to get the door unlocked. But um, yeah, in the heat of the moment, those two would be not helpful. Yeah. I don't think. Then who would you call to? Who would you back to get you out of the gym? Oh, this is a good question. So I already know who in like the office I would call, and I know who I wouldn't call. Yeah, I wouldn't call stats guy. You wouldn't? No. Nah. Who would you call? Homie. Producer okay. Homie. Homie okay. would just run through the door. <laughs> okay. That'd be fine. Well, I think I would go for Shelly Heath. Yeah. So she's Ooh. quite like level headed, um, quite calm, but also can get quite fired up. So <laughs> I, if, I did, if I did need her to literally run through the door, she probably could. But yeah. if it didn't escalate to that level, she's actually a good, good head on her shoulders. Yeah. And I think she would reach out and help me out of that situation. Yeah. Very caring. She comes across sometimes as like she's like tough, but. She's a real softy on the inside, so yeah. she'd help me out. Oh, know. that's a good one. I like it. Yeah. Before we let you go, we probably do need to talk about Saturday because it's kind of your job. <laughs> uh, you take on the Brisbane Lions. Casey Fields at 11.05 a.m. What a time. Uh, you got beaten by the Lions last season by 25 points, but overall you've beaten them three times. Did you pay attention to their game on Sunday and see how North just, just cut a sway through them? I think it would be rude not to watch that game. <laughs> um, <laughs> heading, in heading, yeah, no, heading into our yeah. game this weekend. But, yeah, did did watch that game. So it was quite interesting to see how North attacked it. Yeah. Um, that being said, I think Brisbane's a very good side, so they will bounce back. Yeah. And I don't think they'll like to be beaten by like that, like that again or beaten at all, to be mm. fair. So I'm anticipating that they're going to come out firing this weekend. So which, you're ready to go for a bit of a physical battle early? Yeah. And we have had a, quite a few good games against them, so I'm keen mm. to – get back out against them, especially off the back of, like, I don't think we gave our best love when we played them in round 10 last year. Um, but, yeah, it should be a good game. So this brings to a question that we are talking about off air, and I know it's a bit different. Like, in, in, in the AFL game, like this weekend, the Swans and the Giants are just going to want to kill each other. Final, but it's Sydney versus Sydney. Is there as much sort of angst towards other teams where some games might be a little bit more physical because of the history you have? Or is it a – it's not saying that you don't get as, you know, physical and angry, but it's like – we're all happy that this game as a whole is building to something. But once you cross the white line, like, I want to smash this person. Um, I think in terms of teams, I think we've got a, like, certain teams that have had a lot of history against. Yeah. And Brisbane's one of them. Yeah. <laughs> so we will want to, we'll, they probably will be a little bit extra zest in this yeah. game because they want to beat us as well. But um, yeah, they're definitely one of the teams that we want to be. Like we've played in grand finals against them, we've played against like prelims and then just like, just generally like really competitive games. Um, and they have been one of the best teams over the whole, all the seasons. I think, yeah, they're one team that we've always wanted to beat. Um, shout out to the Bulldogs. We've always got this Hampson Hardyman Cup. Yeah. Um, and regardless of where we are in the ladders, it, it's always a super competitive game. So they're another yeah. team that yeah. Um, we, yeah, we really like to beat them as well. I like it. Awesome. Yeah. All right. This beats Sarah Lampard. Thanks for jumping on today. Yeah, awesome. Thanks for having me, guys. Thanks, Sarah. How good was that? 
That ruled. Having a guest in studio is fun. Who knew that that's what you're supposed to do when you have a guest? We should have <laughs> offered her actually a cup of tea and some biscuits. We should do that next time. Oh, I didn't offer her some slice. Or a ninja oh, creamy. Ninja creamy. Yeah, I don't know. That's the, that's the vibe on the yeah, show. Hey, <laughs> just what house. I'm on board. Ninja creamy is all around. No, all that was right. great. Great interview. Mm. Let's get into some game previews. We have a game Friday <laughs> afternoon at the MCG as the Western Bulldogs take on Port Adelaide, 4.30 in the afternoon. So first of all, let's, you know, we know this has been moved from Whit Noble. But how cool is it that these players are getting to play on the MCG? Oh, yeah. That would be awesome. They would be very, very excited Mm. to play out Mm. there. The Demons did this last year. Two years ago. Oh, it was two years ago. I went to that one against uh, North and it was awesome. Yeah, Yeah, the space and the amount of goals, it was great. Yeah, so Dogs won the only meeting by 19 points. They played two years ago. That was when the dogs were okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm. like the dogs got absolutely <laughs> deleted last week by the Giants and Port Adelaide yes. were better than what we thought. So the way that they didn't touch the footy against GWS <laughs> on the bigger ground of the MCG, oh, you could see Port Adelaide just running through them. Yeah, and I think that they I think that they probably will unless a lot of the the senior dogs players um Try and step up. Is this but, Ali Blackburn having thirty-five touches? Oh, well, she look, already had she like probably will. Last yeah. week, she yeah. probably will. I um, mean, you know, we, we all really feel for Ali uh, in this season. Mm. Um, but I think the dogs, the dogs fell away in the second half last yeah. week. They were competitive for a quarter, yep. which they'll be trying to take some really um, positive things out of. Um, but I think with the bigger ground MCG, like their fitness and their confidence is going to be. Um, not good enough to yeah. get them across the line. Yeah. I reckon they are not negative footy. I think they need to play more defensively. Like they're not good enough to play attacking against some of the teams that aren't in that sort of bottom four. Mm-hmm. So against Port, who did really well against Adelaide, they probably just need to almost park the bus. Like, so does it almost make it like just a gross scrap that's where what, it's four goals That's to the three. only way they're yeah. going to be in it because that was the start of the game last week. Yeah. It was a bit, well, other than uh, O'Dowd's goal, it was very sort of uh, scrappy and things like that. Yeah. That's sort of the game where they can stay in it. But it's gonna be. It's hard to do that. In yeah, I agree with you as well. And yeah. their their coach, um, Tam Hyatt, was like, "We need to do everything in our control that we can control mm. better." Um, I'm gonna so take more marks from. Kicks, well, they need to do to basic other. football, basics as basic well, yeah. football yeah. better. But they they're really looking at how they like really scrapped in that second quarter mm. um, and showed some real like true grit. Um, but when they fell away, they sort of went back into their old habits and, yeah. and that's what you get from an inexperienced team. It's going to be all the bees around the honeypot trying to get the ball, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. No, that's fair call. Sinead Goody, second game of her oh. career, gets to play at the MCG. Could that's, she just, that's pretty cool, yeah. How's she, this? She's yeah. never been to the MCG. Oh, oh wow. Wow. It's like first the time first you go on there. time <laughs> she's going to play on the MCG. She's going to have a ripper. That I'm going to say over 25 disposals. Yes, okay. I like it. Fun to watch last week against that Crows outfit and now comes up against the Western Bulls. She'll be just coming and going, how good's footy? Yeah. It's great. <laughs> how good's footy? Like, how easy. good's footy? How good is She'll footy. do something that Ken hasn't done yet and that's win a game at the MCG when it matters in September. Whoa, bang. 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 Ken does watch this show. So. Got to give drive-bys the, uh, the AFL <laughs> when I can. But So the big question of this is, can the dogs lift for this huge game at the MCG? No. No, I don't think that they can at all. Uh, I'll, I'll say I reckon the margin's going to be a lot better than last week just because MCG, bigger space, I don't see it. The transition from end to end is not is a lot harder on a bigger ground. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to say it's not going to be 70 points, mm. but they're not going to lift dramatically. Yeah. I think it'll be like 40 or 50 points. So yeah. Kirsty Lamb plays against her old side for the first time as well. Yeah. It just happens to be at the G, which <laughs> is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so last time they met, it was 28 to 9. So that's this is that's the dog's best hopes of winning the game. I Low scoring, scrappy, yeah. but I don't think it's going to be like that. It's it, we, They need the rain that's expected to come. Uh, so my, my tip for this, if it doesn't rain, Port win this by 30 points. Ooh. I'm tipping Port by a little bit more. They had a massive focus on uh, fitness mm. and, and contest in the preseason. Um, so I reckon they're going to be able to go the distance on that ground, pun intended. Um, so I reckon Port by 35 points. Okay. That's man. Oh, I thought you guys might go a little bit higher. I'm going to go 40. Just feels like a 40 <laughs> plus sort of game. Port Adelaide by 40. Uh, yeah, I reckon Goody's going to have an awesome game. Gemma Horton will have an awesome game. Yeah. Well. Oh, I've got oh, to tell yeah. you something that um, that Goody said during the week. Yeah. Here we go. So we also got a comment from someone saying Gemma Horton at the half forward flank last week uh, wasn't the right play once she got into the midfield, well, dominated yeah. the clearances, but she considered half forward. On Friday night, and, Extra just, and just go yeah. off. She mm. can literally be put anywhere. It's like Gemma, send a half bag. Yeah, 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 yeah. Rock, yeah. The MCG want. is your paddock, yeah. and she she'll really step up and she'll love playing yeah. out there. Yeah, I want to see some goal celebrations too. 
Um, okay, so Goody it was in an interview asking, you know, what's it like out here living in Adelaide, yeah. and she said, I'm living with my brother right now. Some of the girls can be pretty annoying, so I <laughs> didn't want to live with them just yet, so we'll see what the future holds. There you go. The girls what? are annoying. Is, she leave, is that a scoop? She's leaving quite a lot? No, I'm joking. Yeah, and apparently <laughs> she's funny. a very keen skateboarder as well. Ooh. Um, oh, which Kane the, Corns is going to hate that. Yeah, so the the old um, the fitness team uh, over there are the definitely, yeah, yeah. definitely not happy that she's, That's like the she's on that. They're not allowed, yeah. to, play, there's few they teams, not allowed to play basketball, not allowed to surf in the season, things like oh. that. Yeah. So a bit boring, but right. that's because Gary, but I think, yeah, rolled his ankle or something, and then Big. women's oh, play did the same thing. I don't they know. paid a lot of money. Yeah, anyway, <laughs> yeah exactly. Casey Fields, Saturday, eleven oh five a.m. The D's take on the Lions. Contrasting coming into this because the D's obviously big win over Geelong last Saturday night. Brisbane got belted by North Melbourne. So this is a big rivalry because uh, Melbourne have won three of the five games played against each other, but Brisbane got I don't know if it was revenge, but they won quite handily in round ten last year. Brisbane's biggest ever loss last week. They will they will be breathing fire. I think that, yeah, that's why I'll get into it later, but they're going to be so like keen to get a win. Like Melbourne obviously have a win. They're like, all right, well, at least we've started off our season. But Brisbane will be so mad. They hardly ever lose, let alone their biggest loss of the season. So they'll be, they'll be fired up. Mm. <laughs> like Bryony's fired Repensive. up right now. <laughs> I, I, I am. I'm like, I can see, I can see that opinion mm. very clearly. Yep. And it was the first one that I had. Yes. And now you're swinging the other way. I'm feeling like, and this is a big call I'm going to make later. Okay. Um, I reckon they might, there's a possibility, they might just be a little. little lull? Yeah. Ooh. Premiership hangover? Yeah. Maybe, maybe. Okay. Um, they were real vulnerable in defense last week, the Lions. Like there was no two way running. They got destroyed yep. in transition and they got belted in the inside yep. 50s. Yeah, it, it's actually going to be a really interesting game because obviously we want to know um, what what Melbourne's like and, yep. you know, if they're going to be up against the really good competition, which Brisbane is. Um, so I'm really excited to watch this game. But I think we might see Brisbane just slip away a little bit. Mm. Um, and I reckon they might be 0-2 after the first Ooh, two games. That is a big call. Surely Dakota Davidson doesn't have two poor ones in a row, though. Look, yeah. I love Dax. I reckon she's awesome. She is going to have to really um, – Step up. Yeah, okay. from last week. Yeah, it was massively. tough conditions, but they're used to that. They're playing out of Casey Fields. Exactly. Don't that's say that's all I'm saying. Tough. It was It was hot. Everyone it was, was perfect. playing, Everyone in, those was playing in the same it conditions. It was perfect yeah. conditions yep. for Lions. They got the heat that they wanted and they got smashed. Yeah. Yeah. No, fair. So you're tipping the Ds. I absolutely well, am tipping early, the Ds. Yeah, tipping oh, you're going, going early yeah, on the tips. That's all right. Yeah, yeah. So, well, it's all right because the big question is, can Melbourne silence the critics for the second week? And all right, I don't know if there's critics this week. Everyone's like, oh, they're still good. Okay, me. I was, yeah, I think last I was week the critic. I chucked this in there because last week a lot of people were going, oh, their preseason was a bit average. Uh, well, ever, everyone sort of said that. So can they do it? Yeah, we did. Yeah. We did. Yeah. Everyone did. Yeah. This guy. Guilty <laughs> as accused. <laughs> absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> Quickly turns around because the Ds will win this by a kick. Um, oh, Ds are going to win by a kick. Okay. Yeah. Um, like, like what kick? One kick? One point kick or a six point kick? One kick. <laughs> that could be anywhere between one and five. <laughs> okay, fine. Super who, margin. Who are the Lions going to send to tame Kate Hoare? I reckon Ooh. that. <sighs> I think it's going to be maybe Brie Conan. Yeah. Um, she does play a tagging role sometimes. Mm. I think that she'll probably have the fitness and agility to stay up with Kate, but I don't know if she's. Does she have the shut tank? it down. Does I she don't have know. the tank to keep up with Kate all day if she just decides and to And Kate's running? their barometer. If, yeah. If, if she, they didn't have her last week, they would have got smashed. She's yeah. just unbelievable. Yeah. We know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's a tricky game, though, I think. Yeah. 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 Hard to tell. You're, you're both going Ds, are you? Yeah. Going Ds. Oh, absolutely. I'm going the Lions. I think they'll be, are you? they'll be breathing fire. Like I said, Melbourne, it's only one game. I think you said during the week they could have easily lost that game last week. Brisbane, is, that was just a one-off, I reckon. It was just one, one-off game where they go. Fascinating. They oh, go, it's going to be wait. bad. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to go Brisbane by I'll, 10 points. I'll have this one on the Wi-Fi on the plane on the way to Sydney. Yes. I'll be tuning in. Very Excellent. Nice. All right, West Coast and Essendon over at Mineral Resources Park in Perth. Head-to-head, one and one. West Coast won this game by four points last season. Stats guy, hit us with a stat. Yeah, I got another one this week. The Eagles have never won back-to-back games in their five-season history. So if well, anyone's thinking, sense. what was that? That makes that sense. That makes sense. I don't know. I thought <laughs> I thought one time, I know they haven't won many games, but I thought they might go, oh, maybe one or two. They've never won in back-to-back games. So I just thought that was a bit interesting. So this is where like cheat code. Yeah. Well, yeah. Daisy Pierce might might change that. The DP yeah. cheat so, code. There we go. So obviously Bonnie Too Good ruled out is a massive out for mm. 
uh, for Essendon there as well because Kate Brennan did get a hold of West Coast last week but didn't capitalise on the mm-hmm. amount of footy that she had. Yeah. I think so, they'll have to send someone across to Maddie Prasparkas to shut her down because we saw last week, even though Fremantle won handily, she still found 25 possessions. Yeah. Yep. And was, She'll always find 25 possessions. Yeah, that's just, yeah. But it's, it's just yeah. It was like last week trying to stop Mon Conti. So Daisy will obviously have watched that game very closely. They yeah. tagged Mon for a little bit. And then in those second and third quarters she where they didn't the tag her, she got off the chain and then they sort of tagged her again in the, towards the end. So yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if they tag yeah, yeah. Sparkus. Mm. So I think um, covering <clears throat> the Bonnie Too Good um, absence, maybe um, Emily Goff could step mm. in. She'd be great um, up forward, but she's a, a draftee. So, you know, that's a lot of a lot of pressure. Steph Wiles go forward. Resting? Yeah, possibly. Or a bit of height. Yeah. She's a gun ruck though. I'd, I'd want to. Yeah, but just rest, well, yeah. resting. Resting, sorry. Yeah. 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 So Wales or Dyke, you want one of the rucks yeah. um, in there. Sophie Alexander could um, step mm. up and be a solid option up forward. Otherwise, Dario Bannister, just mm. get in there. She Maybe was so, hold, she was really good last hold week. Hold a mark this yeah. week. Yes. Hold a mark. Yes. Just mm. get some of that grip o on your fingers. <laughs> That's mate. when you walked in last week off the ground every time. Can we just hold a mark? That's what you uh. Essendon fans just were pleading. Because even the defensive marks, other than uh, Gaylor was really good. Oh, thought, yeah, she was yeah. awesome. On debut, she yeah, was, she yeah, was yeah, great. Yeah. And then the coach after we heard in the press yeah. the coach was like, Oh, she was just great. She's I couldn't awesome. believe how good she was on <laughs> debut. And neither could we. But then yeah. the other one, if they just took a mark. I would have it would have made been a different so much, game. It would have been a different game. A so different game. Maybe there was just some up. first game jitters and yeah. they can hold some marks this week. Yeah. Did Jess Hosking bring her hatred from Richmond last week across <laughs> to Essendon? Like just, just, just the rivalry. Used yeah. to play for Richmond, have to hate Essendon. Like 15 touches, two goals last week. Awesome she game. Was unbelievable. Yeah. A good article uh, as well, written by Eliza Riley on mm. her as well. So go check that out if you can as well. So like real deep insight into when she had uh, those off-field issues a couple of years ago mm-hmm. as well, which was fantastic. So does Daisy get him up and about again for the second week in a row? Oh. Because the Bombers are wounded and are traveling all the way across. Like, if you get the footy in Ella Roberts's hand and they yep. can get going in transition yep. from yep. defense to offense, they can cut us in an open again. And it's a bigger field than Windy Hill. And I think that they will. The Ooh. way that they were playing last put the footy to week, space. like put it to space, but also Speed, they yep. backed in their skills. Mm. And they really did. They were taking marks. They had a lot of people at the ball, um, you know, great run and carry, moving the ball really quick with, quickly through the corridor, you know. And yep. I just thought, just oh, I just don't know, Vesson and uh, uh, know how to shut that down just yet. Well, Charlotte Thomas gained 527 metres last week. She's a freak. Yes. Great for AFLW fans. Yes. Which yeah. important yeah. in this game as well, like because that's we found the deficiency in Essendon already. So just pile on the pressures inside 50 yeah. and they'll crumble. Yeah. Yep. You're a Bombers fan. Thoughts, vibes, feeling? Because the big question is, can the Eagles crush your hopes? <laughs> oh. Yes. yes. They, they can, yeah. I think that they can. If, if, if the Eagles are what we think... They are after one game. Um, if they can, if they can hold up, I reckon Eagles by eight points. Whoa, it's even the Eagles. Yeah, I, am. Uh, I, th- I think I'm just going against your day today. <laughs> I feel, I feel this is the opposite to last time I was on. I'm going. Uh, I'm going Essendon. Yeah. I think one week of the Eagles, Richmond should have won. Yeah, I think Cody Brennan literally, if she just kicked that goal from near the top of the goal square, yeah. they would have won. Uh, and we all had Essendon a lot higher on the ladder than the Eagles. So I don't, yeah. it was just one week. Yeah. I would love to see the Eagles win. I, I really, really want the Eagles one to win. One at home will be nice for them One too. at home as well, the first one. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, but I'm going to go Bombers. I think they're going to be too strong. Yeah, I've got to back Essendon in just to bounce back. Are you? Yeah. Oh. Just. Well, he's the, he's the Essendon, Essendon truth. I know. Supporter. <laughs> well, like, uh, you can really yeah. You're used to this pain though. <laughs> yeah. I am. Whereas, yeah, I, I had them so high up in my top four. I thought they were going to rise up. The two good injury is big, but it also doesn't. Now there's no massive reliance on her going forward. So they can be, be a bit more creative going forward as well with a bit of chaos there. Creative, but they need to step up and they need to play good yep. footy. Absolutely. Your BNF of last season and club person of the year, leading goal kicker, is out. And won't be across there with them. Yeah. You mm. don't have that option. Yeah, she, she'll she'll be around. She's at training, like all that kind of stuff. She's still playing, out, yeah. you know, a leadership role and good advice. And, but you know. they get on the plane and she's like, bye, yeah, guys. Yeah. Um, do you reckon even Maddie Gay might get a stint on the forward line? Oh, sticky, sticky mitts. Might have to. Uh, maybe. Sticky mitts. Yeah. <laughs> sticky mitts, Maddie Gay. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> we have not nicknamed you Maddie Gay, don't worry. <laughs> Let's get across to Victoria Park where you will be on Saturday afternoon. Collingwood take on Hawthorne. First ever meeting between the two teams. This is a fascinating game yep. because mm. Collingwood showed pieces last week where they probably could have won the game in accuracy cost them and Hawthorne were just like, you see what the men have done this season? 
We're going to do the same. Vibes, excitement, selfies, run and carry. Celebrations. Yeah. Everything was yeah. there and it was in Frankston of all places. Mm. <laughs> now they get to Victoria Park, which is like the Frankston of the city. This side of the table, this side of the table loves Frankston. I'm yeah, no, sure. I've got to make Frankston <laughs> jokes all the time. Yeah. But it is the Frankston of the city. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> this is a great game. Like You're going to be boundary for oh, this yeah, game. Yeah. Yep. Take us through it. Look, I am really excited about this mm. one. Um I think uh, it's it's hard to pick a winner. Hawks, as you mentioned, their game plan is, is off the charts. The, that that run and carry, and they've got the skills yep. uh, to to really put some pressure on the ball. They had multiple goal goal kickers last week. Ten different goal kickers. Yeah, ten different goal kickers. Bodie yeah. had one goal four as well. So, so Bodie yeah. needs to just a little just straighten up a little bit. A yeah. <laughs> couple of little zen moments before going on and being like, I know. I know where the goal goes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, 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 would, yeah. it would have helped oh, me if she kicked two personally. Oh, there you go. Oh, <laughs> in your no, multi. Co- no comment. No comment. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I think this one is going to be a real tester for the Hawks. Um, Collingwood are a competitive side, mm-hmm. um, and I think if they can really take it up to, to Collingwood, I think that they will absolutely come away with the win. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I know. I, I agree. I think, yeah. Obviously, last week the Pies lost, not just because Sydney were really efficient, but they were just so inefficient in front of goal. The Pies mm-hmm. they had more inside fifties, more scoring shots. Yeah, if they can fix that, they were also terrible with the footy. They in were, yeah. Too. That's what I wrote down as well. The disposal efficiency. I think you talked about it in the Brittany, yeah. Brittany, yeah. Brittany, yeah. Like, yeah. Just sometimes when you get in the ball, instead of just rushing, take your time a little bit more Pies, and they'll probably yeah. Yeah, can win a lot more. Because they had their, their forwards. So Grace Campbell mm-hmm. was one goal, one. Eliza James, no, no goals, one point. Yeah. Um, you know Barnett. Just had two behinds. That, but I also that, think the atmosphere was six, nearly six thousand at North Sydney Oval. It's a different style. It's it's not an AFL ground. I as know, well. but so the amount of moths. <laughs> there was, did yeah. we didn't even talk about? Moths. There was more moths than people there. It was ridiculous. But that's what I mean. Like the amphitheatre of North Sydney may have created an extra added bit of pressure because mm, uh, maybe uh, talking to someone who went to the game was like it was all red and white. Yeah. Like it, so it was very loud pro yeah. Sydney. Yeah. I feel like that gets like a lot of competitive people quite up and about. Like yeah. when the world's against but you. But it's also that little like bit. We're, yeah, that's t- true. we're told to, you know, like step, step up, up, like yeah. go, you know, leave from like behind. It. So, um, yeah, I just think like last week when you had your mids and your key defenders kicking the goals, uh, yeah. then, need then forwards to step yeah, up. you need your forwards to step up. So yeah. hopefully they were just having a bad, a bad week. Definitely. Big question. Is this a battle for a finals position between these two teams? Because if Collingwood goes zero and two, it is a long way back. And then a lot of people had Hawks in the finals. Yeah. So I'm saying, yeah. Like there we I think we all predicted around that sort of seven to nine to ten mark. Yeah. So if one yeah, if whoever loses this could go, oh, we might not make that eighth position, yeah. seventh or eighth position. Yeah. I a hundred percent agree. Mm, mm, yeah. yeah. Tips. Uh, I'll go first. Uh, I'm going Hawks. I think they've just got so many good forwards, and I know that Collingwood probably could have won last week, but I just like this new sort of wave. They're so fast, so zippy, and I think they're going to just get over the line. Maybe two goals two against uh, Pies. We've agreed. Oh, there we go. We've On agreed. Sides, we go. That's good. Very nice. Uh, yeah, I got the Hawks by 10. I yep. just think – and my main reason for doing that is because I'm just so excited by them, mm, you know, yep. and I think that their potential is huge. I'm really excited what they did last week, and I think that, you know – I don't know if Collingwood is, is in a position to bring out their best footy and get across the top of them. So Hawks Fair by enough. 10. Yep. Hawks by 12. Yeah, Ooh. On board as well. L- you two are the same. Yeah. Yeah. Like, right. Liked what I saw last week. Okay. Liked, liked what I saw from them more than what I saw from Collingwood. To do what they did in those conditions at Frankston was mm-hmm. ridiculous. And I think the speed that they have, which the Swans had last week, showed how you can get at Collingwood. It's quick transition, good movement of the footy, and I think their speed will be too good. Yep. Yep. I like it. Let's go across to Sunday. Richmond and GWS at Punt Road at 1.05 p.m. Richmond lead 3-1, and one, won this game last season by 19 points. The Tigers will be absolutely desperate to bounce back. Eagles had a really good defensive setup last year, and Richmond were like, oh, we don't know what we're doing here. Poor decision-making, uh, embarrassing 50-meter penalties. Yeah, gave three goals by oh, half-time through free kicks. That? Yeah, and so- just... That was yeah. so bad. But so, except they, they trailed by 22 at half time. Yeah. And they came back and Rally. they did get themselves um, right back in the played game. Played more their front. style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hit the front, played more their style. They were a bit unlucky. They literally, was what was it, the last couple of minutes? That, yeah, that last the last goal, minute. So, yeah. Last minute. So they did okay to get back in it, but they the, just need to start a lot better. And they didn't look like themselves at all. Yeah. And they need to be disciplined. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And yeah, not giving away all those free kicks. Oh, no. that, that will I, be the I, main I thing they've talked the game, about. Yeah. I think, yeah, that will be something that they talk about this week is like, let's yeah. not give away the silly free kicks, the silly 50 meter penalties. Yeah. Because in AFLW, it, it, that punishment just hurts so much. Like 50 meter just gets you out of danger straight away. Yeah. Yep. No, not wrong. Hmm. I think, okay. yeah, I wrote down here. Who's going to stop Zali Gold to it? Obviously, yeah. we talked about her four goals. Just have her and Conti go head to head. It'll be sick. Yeah, that'll be, that'll be pretty cool. <laughs> but, then, but then when Zali goes forward a bit, I'm not backing uh, yeah, Conti oh, to Conti go one on one. Defense, yeah. yeah. So I'm just interested to see who's going to take her because I'm not sure they have the right matchup for yeah, Goldsworthy, which would be because she's a little bit stronger, a little bit bigger yeah. than some other players. So yeah. it'll be interesting. Mm. Mm. You've also got Eilish O'Dowd in the ruck as well, where she showed last week she can, she's she added, she's as a beast. As, no, as, she an, is, as an added yeah. midfielder, the pressure that she's going to create around the footy. She's as a well. test, apparently. I just saw this morning. Oh. To play, oh, is she? But they're hopeful that she'll play, and um, mm. yeah, so hopefully she does because that that would be a big out because she was one of their best players last week. Yeah, well, but we I've, didn't we I've, didn't have high hopes for GWS in mm. our in our preseason. Is uh, this more? <laughs> is that result more reflective on the Dogs or the Giants? Well, um, yeah. Well, here's the thing. Uh, I think they've shown that if you're not going to play well, they can actually run over you. Yeah, yeah. Um, because they did keep the Dogs to just one goal three. So, um. Yeah, I, I'd like to see Izzy Huntington up mm -hmm. there with more than 12 possessions in a game Definitely. where you're a top player and you're absolutely pumping the other team to walk away 12 possessions. No. Yep. Um, Eilish, I doubt. Absolutely want to see her in there. I hope she's good. And then Elise Parker, yeah. 29 possessions uh, and a goal last week. Yeah, so awesome. I think if those sort of big names can step up, I think, th I think that they can take it to Ooh. Richmond. Yeah, okay. I yeah. think that they can. I don't I think Richmond is doing – things too flashy mm. where um, GWS aren't going to be competitive. Okay. Yeah. Right. I think Richmond are relying on their stars a little bit too much. Cause yeah. And need more out of Amelia this year. Ali yeah. McKenzie, yeah. I think, is going to have a really good year, but there was a quarter where she didn't get one touch. Yeah. And I'm like, well, she averaged like 20 touches last year, so that was very surprising. Yeah. But there's also Katie Brennan can just go, okay, last week was she just needs a to click. Yeah. Like yep, she needs to go, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm back. Start of the season, yeah. again, round she's, one. Yeah. Looks like go. someone stole her powers Gets last week. Gets rid of the bad juju. She's, yeah. <laughs> she's just walked around the changing rooms with sage all week, just like, <laughs> I don't guys, think that's her stop. Yeah. 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 I think she had a horcrux put on her. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Harry Potter, <laughs> But yeah, so... GWS, they're just going to hit the ground running and just like, all right, we're going to have a crack. Yep. But Richmond, structurally, they need to be set up better as well. Mm -hmm. So the big question, this is very simple. Is this finals done for Richmond if they lose to West Coast and GWS in the first two weeks? I say yes because their draw only gets harder from here. Yeah. Yeah, you have to say You're yes, playing two of the worst teams from you, last year. You were, yeah. probably would have locked in those two as wins uh, at the start of the yeah, season. Yeah, you might have. And then they'll be, oh, they'll be gutted if they lose this. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I absolutely all, all agree. Excellent question. <laughs> Excellent question. Excellent question. It's almost like the stats guy did the run shit. Yes. I've got Richmond by two goals. Mm. Ooh, I'll go Richmond by, yeah, 15 points. Round, round about the same. Yep. It's like Richmond's next couple of weeks, Sydney, Carlton, Port, North, Collingwood, Geelong. <laughs> and then they run home with- They might only win it one Then they toilets. run home with the Dees, Essendon, and the Hawks. Bye, Richmond. <laughs> yeah, they're That's gone. not That's great. That's a tough victory. Uh, I'll tip the Tigers by 12, 13 points. Nice. Yeah. Excellent. All about same. Yep. Gold Coast and Carlton up at the Great Barrier Reef in Mackay, Sunday, 1.05 p.m. Can't lead this three to one. Won this game by two points last year. Both teams got caught out uh, last week badly. I know I, I liked what I saw more from Carlton than what I did from Gold Coast, but in the end, it was still poor results all, all in all because mm. I think Gold Coast had chances to kick back in the game. They kicked two goals late and just it slipped away from them, whereas Carlton in the second half slipped away as well. You've said before, players leaving them, so that it's experience. It's for both teams. It's experience, yeah. experience, experience. Yeah. But uh, also fitness as well for Carlton. Yes. They, they really tend to drop off, as we saw last week as well, and I'm like, I just want them to go the distance. They actually, quarter effort, yeah. Yeah, mm. and they, they do have some firepower mm. in there, but I just feel, even watching them last week, you know, they scored the first two goals, but they were just a little bit, Lackluster. I felt like they were just a little bit behind yeah, all day. Get, get around each other. Yeah. Yeah. Some of the other teams just you jumping had on each McKay other. in there getting 40 odd touches or whatever she had. Yeah. She had the ball on a string at one yeah. point. Yeah. It's like she needs help in and around yeah. there because she was in, in every contest. Now, Keely Shrah had a bunch of the footy as well, but their tools, the Moody's, Mia Austin and Jess Good, they need to get their hands on the footy because mm -hmm. that's where they can exploit Gold Coast. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I really agree with that one. I, the one thing I wrote down here, you said about Abby McKay. Yeah. Abby McKay versus Charlie Robot. just oh, going to be one of the Simon juiciest yeah. matchups all, yeah. all weekend. That's going to be yeah. so fun. Both led the disposals last game in losing performances. So, yep. yeah, I think they're going to be awesome to yeah go up against. But uh, Lucy Single could 
try and tag uh, Ooh, Abby as well. Yeah, maybe. Ooh, they okay. Do, they don't mind a tag, yeah. yeah. Yeah, don't, don't mind a tag. <laughs> don't mind a tag. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It. But we, yeah, it's going to come down, you guys already mentioned, it's going to come down to the defense. I think both teams were so bad defensively. Yeah. We're either going to see them both become really defensive or it's going to be the most open game ever and it's going to be high scoring. High scoring, I'm yeah. I'm leaning towards high scoring, I think, because there's just not enough defense. I want it to be high scoring. I want it to be high scoring as well. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, Carlton's got. The Kai as well. Yeah. Carlton's got most of their <laughs> their back line missing anyway. Yeah. Um, and Gold Coast don't have ones. Everyone got, they got <laughs> pilfered last they don't year. Have, they don't have a back line. <laughs> yeah. Everyone got pilfered. So, yes. Yeah. Yeah, with no back lines, um, I reckon there there could be some yeah some really high scoring, which is good. Yeah, high scoring games. That's what we fun, want to watch, anyway, you know. So, yeah. so I agree. yeah. Big question is: Is this the fall back down the latter year for Gold Coast? So it's they had that rise, bit mm-hmm. of a dip before. I oh know we're forecasting to twenty twenty five, but it's it's that reset I, year. Yeah, I thought that would be all right again this year, and then round one really. But was that just everything? Everything that went wrong did go wrong. They didn't kick straight, and St mm. Kilda just couldn't miss in the first half. I mean, St Kilda played they were an unbelievable. epic game. Yeah. They, they turned did. into prime Nick Del Santo. All yeah, of them. <laughs> and Jesse Wardlaw was an absolute freak. So, yep. you know, you, I mean, we, we have to judge them by that one game right now as we're doing our predictions, you know, but you also can't judge them by one game. So, yeah, that's true. Um, it's, it's hard to say, but at this stage, yeah, maybe. Uh, tips. Uh, all right, I'll go. I'm going Gold Coast at home. Great Barrier for Arena. They don't lose there, don't, right? No, nah, I don't know. Actually, how they, I don't actually know how they. <laughs> we don't know if it's like a 20, 20 <laughs> parallel. Yeah, it's not like, like the men's yeah. team. Uh, I'll go Gold Coast by ten points. It's all around those margins. Yeah. So pretty. Similar. I got Gold Coast by two goals. Nice. Gold Coast by two points. Oh, Ooh, two points. Very nice. Close one. Yeah. Very Let's nice. get to Arden Street. We're sending yes. stats guy there. <laughs> Three o'clock on a Sunday afternoon as the Roos take on a Geelong. North have just dominated this. They lead 5-0. and oh. They won last year by nine points. Stats go. This is your team. Take it away. Yeah, I can do a few little things. Uh, last three meetings have been decided by two goals or less. I've been to a couple of them. There was one at GMHBA that literally just came down to the last couple of kicks. There's been some awesome uh, games between these two. It, uh, other than maybe Geelong's first year, they've been right up there as well. So mm-hmm. they've been really fun. Uh, both teams like to cut inside and play through the middle of the ground a lot and just play so attacking. So I'm really excited to see that, them go against each other. I mentioned before one of the best midfield battles, but this is really, really fun. You've got four midfielders, probably four of the best in the comp. You've got Rid- Riddell and Garner on north side. Then you've got Prasparkas and McDonald, Abby McDonald. Absolute freaks. All going head to head. So I'm very, very excited for that. My worry for Geelong is they struggled to take marks inside 50 last week mm. and the North defenders could just go, <laughs> clunk, yeah. see ya. Well, there was yeah. a lot of intercept marks, yeah, North for North yeah. last week, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, I really like that the four best mids in the comp and that yeah. that, that match up there. Definitely up there. Amy McDonald is real. She's really like one of the most improved for me. I know yeah. she's she's always been really good, but being up there with your Press Parkers, your Garner, your Riddell, it's um that's going to be awesome yeah. to watch, and mm. I can't wait. There's just going to be like all of them could get 25 plus disposals. And yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. They're just all guns. But yeah. the thing is, North just have so many options throughout the field. Throughout the field, like we talked last week about Kate Shearlaw just being a great outlet oh, down the line for amazing. Them. Jazzy Gun. Garner can drop in, and it's even up forward with uh, Randall Wall and Martin. It's yeah, like, the Irish duo Wall and there's Martin. There's just yeah. options. Awesome everywhere yeah. for this Ruse team. And they're really backing themselves in. They're really confident. They look yeah. elite. You can tell though their game, like they, they'll just take everything on. Like, oh, yeah. they, oh, they're going for a really hard kick. Oh, oh it just works because yeah. they're so confident, not hesitant. No, not yeah. one North player was hesitant last yeah. week at all. It's yeah. like, you get the ball and you go. <laughs> you just, you just go. You run. <laughs> Big question. Do North flex their muscles at home once again and everyone goes, oh, they're so good. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, I have to say, it. I'm, I'm happy I'm on this podcast talking about North. The other one, I, I didn't get to talk about North on the <laughs> Got to get you so in a good mood before the happy. AFL show later. Uh, tips, North by four goals. Ooh. They, they belt them. Yeah, I'll go North by, yeah, what am I? I'm going to say 30. I, I, I don't know why. I just I'll think go it's going to be a bit by more. 20. 20, okay. Mm. Yeah. Four you reckon goals. they're going to pump them? Yeah, I, I think it's going to be really close for like three quarters. And then that fitness, def, North's fitness yeah, has quarter. gone up. I don't know what they've done in the off season. They, they hung out with you for two hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah maybe. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> they, they literally, the fitness has just gone on to another level. So yeah. Very excited. They probably highlighted the things that they needed to really work on maybe, to get yeah. them that that one step further. Mm. And Which is uh, annoying losing a grand final. They're like, yeah. we just need to lock in here. There's we'll a couple of little, the one percent. The hate and the anger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You need to be able to rest on your fitness. That needs yeah. to be like the prerequisite. Then, yeah. yeah. Or, but they're doing extra sprints and then I'm going, not doing it again. Yeah. <laughs> not losing this again. Yeah. Like there's, there's hate. I don't yeah, absolutely. It. Let's get to 
R S E A Park. Okay, Moorabbin, three o'clock Sunday afternoon. I'm going there. St Kilda Saints take on my beloved Sydney Swans. St Kilda pumped the Swans back in 2022. In fairness, everyone beat the Swans in 2022. Yeah, that was a different. They went winless. It was the Swans' first game. They were good in the first three quarters, and then everything just went not great. Uh, Last week, St Kilda, awesome, absolutely awesome. Spread the love around goal kicker wise. Jesse Wardlaw is the key to this matchup. Mm-hmm. Quite clearly, if she's on, the Swans are going to struggle. They had ten different goal kickers last week, which was just unbelievable. The, the Saints, everything just went right for them, as we said before. That was just awesome. Yeah, um, really excited about this game. This is like one of the games of the round, I think, mm. because they're they're both elite. Um, as you said, Saints were unbelievable last week. Ten different goal kickers. Jesse Wardlaw. I feel like. I feel like. Uh, Patricios, yes, out. Okay, that's fine. But it's not it's not a one woman show at St Kilda where they've had to rest on her for, yep. for so long. They've really built out a really good team. Nick Del Santo's just been doing it quietly as he goes along, just giving doing it a well, nudge. Yeah. Um and uh, this is their season. Like last week's game was elite. It was amazing. Um and I think, yeah, it's gonna it's oh. It's going to be a really good game. I reckon this is the toughest game to tip yeah. out of all of them. Yeah. Like you said, there was one of the best games. I think this is so hard. I'm just, I keep switching in my head right now. Just yeah. who, to, who to tip. So yeah. it's going to be fun. got belted around the clearance footy last week, which was a yes. worry. They were second to the footy, but the thing was, if the ball gets trapped in their defensive 50, they're in trouble as we saw last week with Gold Coast. But the thing is, the Swans love rebounding. They yeah. just get the footy and they, they just, just go. go. Yeah. They were elite at that last yeah. week. Yeah. yeah. So... In this, you've got – so you want to see Montana Ham get more time on the footy as well. Laura Gardner had a bunch of it as well. I just see in and, in and around the contest is big here. First use of the footy is going to be key, and then it's Ali Morfitt or Jesse Wardlaw. Whoever's the best on ground out mm-hmm. of those two probably leans that way there. Yeah, I don't mind that. You know, in the Swans four line, Privatelli just sneaking oh, around. The marks yeah. that Privatelli can take yeah. for like – She's obviously pretty tall, but not that tall. Yeah. And really skinny, and she's just taking these massive marks. <laughs> awesome, awesome to watch. Yeah, and Lucy McAvoy as well was great last week. So this, yeah. I, I I can't wait to go. Like I'm so pumped up yeah. for this game. Big question is: Can the Saints prove that they are one of the best uh, offenses in the league? Can the Swans prove that they're one of the best running teams in the league? Yeah, so we've got two mm. questions there. Interesting. I put that in there for the Saints just because their offense fired. Yeah. It's just, it's going to be hard to do that every single week because, as you guys said, it just everything clicked. But that could be up there. They've got a lot of good forwards. So they do. I, I, th- I think I think they'll do it again, the Saints. Yep. Um, what was your Sydney question? Can they prove they're one of the best running teams in the comp? Because the way that they rebounded out of defense, yeah, they that's just their went, game just yeah, on their bike. It, it was really exciting. Mm. Um, and it, they can switch it up as well. They can go out wide. They can go straight down the corridor, whatever it is. They've got a lot of um, run with them as well. There's yeah. always um, a lot of plays to the ball and that kind of thing. So 12 yep. marks inside 50 last week, the Swans. Mm. Not bad. Not bad at all. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Should we go yeah. tips? You're tipping the Saints. I haven't decided. <laughs> all I've written here is this is a really hard one. <laughs> just just Come in the on, draw. Switzerland. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know both teams have red and white, but... Stats guy, um, you I'm go gonna first. I'm going to do it last. All right, you go last. I'm going Saints. I think uh, Sydney were a bit lucky last week that the Pies didn't kick straight. I know Alex will be going Sydney for his beloved Swans, but I think the Saints just have a little bit more firepower on offense. Like I don't see the Swans kicking more than 50, whereas the Saints can. I flip-flopped on this game five different times. <laughs> I've landed on the Swans. You okay. flip-flopped? Yeah. Flip-flopped? I'm like, <laughs> Saints, Swans, Saints, Swans, Saints. Footy, pie, swans. Oh, no, swans. I understand what a flip-flop footy, is. Pie, <laughs> pie, footy, pie, pie. Um, <laughs> yes, Swans by two points. I think this is a ripper. Yeah. I, I'm ver- I can very easily see St. Kilda just tearing them a new one, though. Like, this is either the Swans get over the line just or the Saints win by three goals. I think it will be, yeah, really close. Yeah, I'm saying Saints by 15. Ooh, yeah. okay. Let's get to the final game of the weekend. Fremantle Oval as the Dockers take on the Adelaide Crows. The Crows lead this matchup 4-1. and one. They won by three goals last year. Both teams come off big wins last week. Crows getting the job done in the showdown. Freo coming to Melbourne and giving Essendon an absolute lesson in rebound football. Yeah. This is great. This, like, you've got you got the Swans and Saints into this. Like, this is a great day of footy yeah, on Sunday. Yeah, it, it really is. I, hate, I can see you're very excited there, Alex. <laughs> yeah. That's what we're all about here. Yeah. I hate <laughs> that North and Geelong's on at the same time as the Swans game. So it's like, I'm going to be at Marab and like, oh, where's the other TV? Yeah, you're going to have to you're <laughs> get gonna on have the to phone. Am there, I going to yeah. be like the only person, like one of two journalists at this game because everyone's going to be Arden Street instead? Yeah, pretty much. Maybe, maybe. 
Uh, Moorabbin's mm-hmm. the place to be. RSEA Park. But it's it, so they good have there. I haven't been there yet, but yeah. I've heard from a few Saints fans in the office that they Scotty, pack it out. Me and Scotty Gowans can just hang out, have a chat after the game. They pack it out. You, there's like the smell of chips in the air. Oh, yeah. Hot chip rating coming your way. You can hear like the waves in <laughs> oh, the background. Beautiful. And you just, just like, the hairs oh, how good's footy. <laughs> and it's going to be a great game as well. Very nice. Yeah. So this game, fantastic. Yep. Yeah. Ebony Maradoff in the center could just go, hey, I saw what you did last week, Fremantle. Don't care. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, she just dominates every, well, that's everything. A, yeah, it's exactly what she's going to do. She does no respect for the competition. Yeah. Plays, <laughs> no. plays her own game and, and is pretty much. decides to delete someone. Yeah. But... Yeah. I think that, um, yes, I think Frio played really well against um, Essendon last week. Yeah. Um, and, you know, Adelaide had Port Adelaide that really sort of took the game to them there. But Adelaide just have that second gear that they go yeah, into. Like and when they're getting challenged, they go, oh, cute. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll just take That's on. cute of you. <laughs> okay. And then they're like, <laughs> boom, you know. Yeah. It's like putting in the nitrous and just, you <laughs> yeah, know, oh, going like off. So, um, yeah, I think Fremantle will absolutely take it up to Adelaide and Adelaide will be like, Cool, guys. See you later. <laughs> yeah, I think we already mentioned that. I think for, we're going to win that game, but they got a little bit lucky with Essendon's errors. Yeah, there was a bit of junk time there. there was a, yeah, a yeah. little bit of junk time goals. It would have should have been a lot closer. Just some yeah. of those marks, whereas Adelaide aren't going to drop into set marks and let Freo go out the back. Yeah. So, you, yeah, you got to lean towards Adelaide. You struggle to see Antai, uh, Antai having a day out once again. Mm-hmm. Uh, Anya Tai. Anya. 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 Yeah. And then I think I, she'll have a good game. I think she will have a good not game. Not four goals. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then McCarthy just has to take on Marinoff and Hatch out. It's like, <laughs> good luck. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be fine. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but I just think, I think that the Dockers will just throw caution in the wind and attack this game the way that they did last week. They might as like, well, yeah. Try and catch them on the hop because we saw last weekend if Port when Port Adelaide had a couple of good link-up touches, mm-hmm. Adelaide were like, oh, yeah, we gotta, we got to work. Yeah. <laughs> so if they can catch them on the hop early, could turn yeah. into a, a very – like a close and tense game, whereas if Adelaide get off the flyers, yeah, see you later. It's yep. done. No, yeah, I agree. So big question, can the Freo Ford line fire against this experienced Crows outfit? I put this in there because when I first put it in there, I'm like, yeah, Freo's Ford line could have a really big day, but talking about it more, no. Nah. Yeah. The Crows just are too good, I think, for them to fire again. They'll be on your tie, we'll have their moments. Yeah. Uh, yeah. McCarthy, they'll have their moments, uh, but yeah, they won't score that big score like they did last week. Big L O S Jones game for the Crows as well. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. A lot of pressure in that 50, and I think – Friend of the show, Jess Waterhouse, she'll want to bounce back as well. She didn't have her best game last week as well. No, she didn't have a great game. So, yeah, she she will want to bounce up. back. Yeah, um, f- well, she does bring a lot of pressure in that forward line too when she absolutely cleaned up, uh, absolutely spaced on who it was there, those two bumps in 30 yeah. seconds. Yeah, that so was awesome. Pressure to help out the team. So Jess will be there for that. But tipping the Crows by two goals. Ooh. Crows by four goals. Ooh. Yeah, I'll say four goals as well. I'll mm. agree with Bryony there. Mm. Okay. They're, they're just too experienced. All right. Big call for the weekend coming up ahead. They've got the power to win, and it'll be a record win at the MCG. What, what type of record are we talking about? Highest win. In AFRW history? Biggest win in AFRW history. What? Biggest win in AFRW What even is the biggest win in AFRW? Wow, that is, well, we talk, I, I don't want to say my big call. That's not as big as that. Jeez. That's quite a big call. Yeah. Wow. That's really impressive, Alex, and I want that to come true for you. Yeah. The biggest uh, win is 96 points. I can see them doing it. That's a lot because of points at the big MCG. Whew. Tap down. Wait, it could be. Are you saying maybe 96 0? 97 0. I hope it's not. That'd no, I'm bad. joking. Oh, that's not going to happen. Do you know what? There's. Well, they only scored nine points. Nine last points yeah. last they week. Allowed, they allowed 70 odd. And if I think the, that port are better than GWS and I add five goals, <laughs> I get there. Jeez. All right. You've actually talked me into it a little bit, a little bit. But maybe not the biggest ever. Statistically, yeah. it's not impossible. Sinead, yes. Yeah, Sinead Goody, 26 and four. Ooh. You got Goody with four goals. Yeah. Wait, four goals? Yeah. Jeez, we're, we're, geez. Big call, big call, big call. I just throw him out everywhere. First time in, uh, on the. Yeah, on that's the, what I mean. It's like. I think she might, be, she might be a bit over the It's also like. CG. It's like <laughs> what, what's this thing that Zach Butters and Connor Rose can't do? This is easy. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. I don't yeah. know about that. Okay, I don't mind it. Sometimes you say some really good things, Alex. And some crazy things as well, yeah. I reckon. I've, I've mixed both there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Go on. Uh, my big call for the weekend, Brisbane could be 0-2. Ooh. For the first time ever. Whenever they've lost the first round, um, 
they've then had a really easy game yep. the week after. Well, they are the favourites, so this is a big call. Yeah, so are you saying it's not a big call? No, no, no I'm saying it is, it is a big call because they are favourites. So for them to lose two in a row when they've been favourites yep. is mm. a big call. Mm. Yep. Great. Very I'm nice. calling that. I like that. Uh, I'm going to go uh, Aileen Gil- Gilroy, the Irish player that used to play for North. I really miss her in North. Just played her first game forward last week, two goals. Yeah. I reckon she's going to get four goals this Bang. week against the Yo! Pies. I reckon the Hawks just, she was amazing. She's yeah. one of the fastest players in, in the league, but she's also one of their tallest players. They've moved her forward for the first time in her whole career last week. Yeah. So I reckon she's going to get four goals this week. Yeah, and it was bloody windy last I week. I know, it's yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. So yeah, she's going to fire up. Keep an eye on Morabin yep. Sunday afternoon. Yep. That game could be electric. Yep. Victoria Park. The hawk ball. Yep. Seeing what North, just keep an eye on the whole week. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> yeah, just it's, keep an eye on everything. It, they're a really good game. And also a game in the MCG. That's cool. We're going to be there. It's going to be sick. Yep. I can't wait. Absolutely. All right. That'll do us for AFLW today. Well, today, uh, if you're listening to this already, because it's Thursday afternoon, check out AFL today. Go to the YouTube channel because we're probably live streaming. We are live streaming the qualifying final between Geelong and Port Adelaide, myself, Stats Guy, Corporate Jim, Leo. We're all going to be there. From 6.15. From yes. 6.15 because we do the team show and then we get into the game. So if you don't want to listen to BT gun, that was out of bounds. Come hang out with us. It'll be <laughs> Ooh, a good shade time. shade on BT. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So big thanks to Stats Guy for jumping on. Thank you. Yo, good to be back. Stats Guy. Yeah, thank, you. thank you, Bryony. Thank you very much. And Alex Donnelly. Yes, and of course, Sarah Lampard for jumping on too. Big shout out for the Melbourne Demons team for helping us out, facilitating that. But remember, smash a like across all the social medias to see us doing awesome stuff throughout the week and just filling in those footy gaps, getting your footy fix. Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and X. AFLW Today, AFLW Today, AU on X. AFL Today on YouTube. Remember, like and subscribe also on the podcast apps. Please follow Cricket Today, Football Today. Football Today up and about again for the EPL season. Absolutely. Uh, we've got NFL Stray as the NFL season kicks off. Hold all tickets back. Group one racing this week. And I've absolutely spaced on what the other thing is. Racing Victoria video series. The second episode that I did is out right now. There is a lot going on in this studio. People stop listening about 40 seconds. <laughs> Get around them like I did a vanilla slice at Witchy Proof on Wednesday <laughs> at Bakery on Broadway. I still want to know where Witchy Proof is. That is the most made up place. Three hours and 20 minutes from my house, stats guy. I'm going to make that an actual line now. now. Like, <laughs> oh, gee, she's getting around that like, like a bloody <laughs> vanilla slice uh, witchy at Witchy <laughs> Proof, isn't she, eh? Bakery on Broadway is <laughs> The most Aussie said to right. <laughs> Bakery on Broadway is amazing. Their coffee's improved as well. Wait, did you bring us back some? Absolutely not. No, I, got the some last, I got the last piece of slice. Shout oh. out to my lovely partner, Steph, for making slice too, <laughs> as well as Gerald behind the camera. Anyway, that's it. We'll catch you next Monday for the review show of round two. But until then, footy's back. Footy's back. It's back. It's back.